My 30s have been a pretty great period of life so far, but it has also been one of the most difficult. Now I'm grateful in that it hasn't been difficult from the sense of just meeting my basic needs for survival, but it's been difficult from a sense of existential meaning. So by the time you hit 30, society pretty much dictates that we should have our shit together, right? That, in fact, a lot of times society dictates we should have our shit together in our 20s, a lot of times. And so we should uh, have the job that we've always been striving for, that we should be married to the love of our life, that we should have our first house, maybe have some kids or some kids along the way. But what happens when that's not the case? What happens when life seemingly has no clear direction and it seems like we have no clear mission or purpose? And this has been something that I have been wrestling around with a lot lately. And while I don't necessarily have clear answers to this problem, I do. There's three pairs of opposing forces that I notice have been really key in sort of determining the amount of joy that I experience in my 30s. And so I think that they're strongly worth considering, and I'll be talking about these in this video. So the first pair of opposing forces is something that I probably wrestle with the most, and this is the notion of chasing after passion or chasing after profit. And so you hear this a lot, but there's a camp of people that say, follow your dreams, ch chase your passion, follow your passion, that sort of a thing. But then there's this camp of people that say, well, don't follow your passion because you might, you, that passion might end up not actually making a good living for yourself, right? Like you'll always be just scraping by. And so this has been something that I've been wrestling with because when I first started this whole self development journey, uh, I had this thought that I was going to reignite this long lost music career that I wanted to cultivate. So probably one of my biggest passions is actually the, the biggest passion that I have is music production, writing music. I love doing it. I could do it probably all day and not get tired of it. It's one of the things that I can just get lost in and wonder where the time went. And so in 2021, as with a lot of people during COVID, I decided to reignite my passion for music production. And I was actually meeting with a, a life coach at the time. And he mentioned that, why don't I, have I ever considered pursuing it like as a career? And I sort of had in the past, but not seriously because pretty much it just seems like a very difficult career to break into, but it gave me some food for thought to chase after that. And so in 2021, I went full steam ahead to try to get better at music production and try to monetize it. And so it was, it was difficult and I made a, a whole other YouTube channel devoted to that. It's called Jotes if you're interested. And the, the problem that I started to realize, I started doing that and I did that for about a year and a half until about the middle of 2022. And I gained a little bit of traction in the sense that I gained a little bit of a following on YouTube and I had like one person that paid me a couple times for some tracks to produce for him. But I never really saw where it was actually going to go in terms of making me money. It was something that I enjoyed doing, but I didn't quite understand how it was going to actually afford the lifestyle that I want. And it's not, less, not to say that I want some you know crazy, lavish lifestyle, but just the ability to quit my day job and just be financially free from having to work a classic nine to five job. And so at that point, I started thinking about, well, maybe I need to shift my framework into not chasing uh, passion, but chasing profit. 
And by chasing profit, I don't necessarily mean chasing money in and of itself, but rather chasing skills that uh, are valued in society, like skills that people will likely pay for, businesses will pay for. And so I started thinking about that and I started looking into different avenues that might accomplish that, but also looking at things that I might enjoy. And so that's kind of when I stumbled upon UX design because it seemed like it was something I could enjoy doing. It still has a creative element to it, but it's something that has tangible business value, right? Like businesses will pay for a good UX designer to uh, improve the experience of their digital products. And so I went and switched and flipped from chasing passion to now chasing this value-driven profit uh, career. And so that's pretty much what I've been doing now for, well, I guess it's been about a year now. And there's always sort of this tug of war between this passion or profit, because I find that the further I skew towards one or another, there's always this sense of what if, right? So now that I'm deep in figuring out UX and how to break into this UX design industry, there's also this piece of me that wonders, well, what if I would have just stayed with music production and done that? Is that something that I could have actually pursued and made money with. More importantly, is it something that I actually would want to make money with? Because one of the fears that I have is that if I chase my passion, will it still be my passion once I'm kind of forced to do it for money, right? Because if I'm doing it as a hobby, then I can sort of do it when I want. When I'm feeling inspired, I can sit down on my computer and produce a track, and it's fun because I don't have deadlines, I don't have timelines. So what happens if I chase that full force and I start getting clients to produce music for, but it starts to feel grindy because I have deadlines to meet. I have to get tracks to these clients within a certain amount of time. And so I start to think about, well, what do I really want? I, I want the freedom to be able to do music production and to get better at it. But I think chasing a value-based skill such as UX design might be a better avenue for me in terms of professional aspirations because, you know, while I like the skill of UX design, it's not my passion. Like, it, it's not something that I wake up and I'm excited to do, but I like the work. It's, it's creative and it is challenging. And so I think about, well, maybe I should stick with that and keep going with that because it doesn't really matter if I lose um, the fire for UX design because it never really was my passion to begin with. It's just something that I was interested in. And maybe I don't have to be passionate about the thing that I monetize. And so there's this interesting book uh, by MJ DeMarco called The Millionaire Fastlane. And he kind of preaches this philosophy of not chasing your passion, which, which was sort of contradictory to what I had always heard before. And he mentioned that chasing a passion can be a waste of time because what if your passion doesn't provide any value to the workplace? What if your passion is taking naps or eating food? How is that providing value to the workplace and how are you going to make a sustainable living from that? So he argues for a different mindset of passion often comes from getting good at something and then people praise you for the good work that you do and that sort of feedback loop of getting better at a skill and getting positive feedback from your clients will, will, will cultivate a passion. And so that's sort of the mentality that I'm treating with UX design. But there's always this push and pull between chasing after a passion and chasing after profit or value-based skills. Profit sounds evil, but... <laughs> um, there's always gonna be that push and pull. And if you can do both, then obviously that's ideal, but that, that can be somewhat hard to do. And so that's sort of the first thing to, to consider 
um, is sort of really dig into what do you want to chase? Do you want to chase your passion, even though it may not be the most financially viable thing? Or do you want to chase after the sort of a value-based skill with the intent that you can still pursue your passion, but on the side? Okay, so the second pair of opposing forces is really important because I think it largely determines the amount of happiness that you experience in life, or at least that has been the case for me. And so the pair of opposing forces are balance versus hustle. So again, in today's society, it's often preached that you should hustle towards your goals and just work as hard as you fucking can towards getting your goals and just tunnel vision your way towards it and let nothing else stand in your way. Say no to absolutely everything else that is not related towards your primary goal. And this is something that I enacted when I was doing UX design. And so during the beginning of that journey, I decided that I was going to tunnel vision my way toward it and I was going to try to get into the UX industry as fast as I could and let nothing stand in my way. And so what did that look like? Well, uh, pretty much I still had my day job. So I would go to my day job as a physical therapist. And then when I came home, I would work on UX design and I would do that every weekday. And then on weekends, if friends invited me out, I would say no because I was either working on YouTube videos or I was working on UX design, whether I was working on a project, learning a new skill, taking a course, building out my portfolio, it didn't matter. I was working on whatever I needed to get done at the time to get to my goal. And so I did that week in, week out, month in, month out. And while I did accomplish a lot in a short amount of time, there's a really big drawback that I don't think a lot of people talk about when it comes to hustle, hustle culture. And it's really the sense that while I was achieving a lot, I wasn't feeling very happy with what I was doing, right? So like, even though I had all of these external accomplishments of taking all these courses and building out uh, some good case studies and, leveling up my skills and what I would consider to be a pretty quick pace, it didn't equate to me feeling better about myself per se. And so that really became a yellow flag to me to really reevaluate, well, if this isn't providing me with happiness, something needs to change. And so I started shifting my mindset from this mentality of hustle to this mentality of balance. And so what does balance look like? So balance is really just reintroducing things that intrinsically uh, create joy in my life. So whether that's going out and dating, uh, going out with friends and doing music production. I mean, one of the things that I completely threw away when I was initially transitioning into UX design is I just tossed away music production. I just stopped doing it. I vowed not to do it so that I could tunnel vision my way towards this new career. And that's like one of the things that I love to do. So I purposefully scrapped something that gives me joy to chase this thing that it doesn't necessarily give me joy per se, but it's this aspirational um, aspirational goal that I thought would bring me joy. And so I started to reintroduce a lot of these things that I cast away and I noticed that my happiness went up. Now the drawback to that is I'm not getting as much done. And so at this point in my life or at this stage of my current transition into UX design, because I'm still not, still don't have a job with UX design. I'm still working on this transition but I'm not trying to put pressure on myself to do it in some arbitrarily short amount of time. I think that was one of the biggest things that caused me dissatisfaction with my life is I would see all these people that would post about, oh my God, I got into UX design. I landed my first job in three months, four months, two months. 
and I would be upset with myself that I wasn't somehow able to do that. But I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like it just, it'll happen when it happens. And I'm trying to be more diligent about just telling myself that, that who am I racing against? Like there's nothing, there's nothing to race against. Like if I get a job tomorrow or if I get a job in six months, like who cares? As long as I'm chipping away at it, then I think that that's the important thing. And that's, that's actually a lesson I learned from Joe Rogan. He, I don't remember what podcast he's done because, or which one it was because he's done so many. But one of the things that has always stuck with me with uh, things that Joe Rogan says is that he's, he mentions that, you know, it doesn't always take this tremendous amount of work output and force to be able to get what you want. Sometimes it's just a matter of just chip away at it. Just day by day, just a little bit, just chip away at it. 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And then, you know, you may not get to your goal as fast, but I think in my scenario, it allows me to pursue other things that I also have an interest in and that bring me joy. Like for instance, I joined an improv class recently. That's something that I've always wanted to do just to break out of my comfort zone. And it has honestly been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. It's, it's a, it's a thrill. And if I was so tunnel vision on focusing on my goals, then I wouldn't have done that. And I wouldn't have done that little side quest. And I think that's a lot of times where the fun can be in life is doing these little side quests, you know, go on that first date, see how it goes, go out with friends and just be social. I find that I'm my most joyful when I'm in the company of others, not when I'm alone, just doing and grinding out work. And so this may not be the case for everyone though. So some people might be intrinsically happy grinding it out and working on their own and just working towards their goals with laser-like focus. And so it's not to say that the path that I've taken is the right path because there may be a different path that is right for you. Maybe you are someone that does get intrinsic joy from having that laser-like focus on working towards an aspirational goal. And so that's why I think it's just important to think about these different paradigms of balance versus hustle, because everyone is going to have a different, they're going to um, align somewhere differently on the spectrum. Their ideal sort of life fulfillment and happiness is going to be uh, sort of be different depending on where they are on the spectrum. So some people might like more balance and some people might find more happiness when they are hustling. So just take the time to think about that because I don't think that it's wise. If you're like me, I don't think it's wise to put all of my eggs in the basket of goal aspiration because I don't want to postpone my happiness to some future date because I have found that that future date never comes. It always gets pushed back. The goalpost always gets moved forward. So if I say that I'm only going to be happy when I get this UX job, I'm not going to be happy then because then it's going to be, okay, I'm only going to be happy when I get this next job or when I get this promotion. And so I think just taking the time to evaluate What brings you joy in your life? And then being able to um, balance uh, balance those aspirations along with those things that bring present joy has been just really valuable for me. And so that's something definitely worth thinking about. All right, and the last pair of opposing forces is actually something I learned a little bit earlier in life. This was actually probably in my late 20s that I discovered this. Uh, but it was really valuable for figuring out um, just the amount of anxiety that I experience in my life. And that is the notion of safety versus uncertainty. And so there are different avenues that you can take in life to reach your goals that you have. And so to give an example, um, when I was, I think, 28, I was chasing, so I'm a physical therapist as a day job. And so I thought that, hey, maybe I want to uh, be my own physical therapist or or run my own physical therapy business. And so when I was 28, 
I decided to do that um, on my own. And I was hearing all of this advice to quit your job and just go for it and just burn the ships and just t uh, uh, channel all of you so that you can channel all of your energy into building that business. And so that's exactly what I did. And so when I was 28, I quit my job and I probably had maybe $5,000 in my bank at that point. And to give some perspective, that would probably give me mm, enough money to survive for three months. So basically, I was giving myself three months to somehow make this business work. And it was honestly probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Because one, I didn't have the skills to be able to build this business. I had the skills as a physical therapist, but I didn't have the skill, the business acumen, to be able to build this business successfully, and certainly not within three months. And so what happened? Well, I failed miserably. And I moved back in with my parents because I failed. I went back and got a PT job, and I felt just very deflated for a very long time. And so there are pros to, there are benefits to the burn the ships uncertainty method uh, in the sense that it does sort of light a fire. But I think that if you're unprepared to do what is necessary to get that business or whatever goal that you're chasing to, to realize that goal, if you're not prepared for the work that it takes, then uh, it's going to end up and disaster. And so now I'm adopting more of this sort of safety approach in the sense that, yes, at some point I am going to quit my job, but I have metrics that I look at now for when that would be a feasible thing to do. And so the, the way that I see that going is that if I am able to make 50% of my current income, then I can quit my job and do whatever it is that um, I want to do. And because at that point, I can, be, I can still maintain, uh, well, it'd be a very meager lifestyle, but I can at least pay my bills. And then ultimately, with that in mind, I can continue to build that up and up. But then the other thing is that I need if I'm going to quit my job, I need to either have that or I need to have 12 months of living expenses saved up. And so all of this is just trying to mitigate the amount of risk and truthfully embarrassment of potential failure. And so now I'm just adopting a much more safer method of achieving my goals because while and I didn't really mention this before, but even though I'm trying to get into UX design, my, my ultimate goal is to not work a nine to five job, even if that's in UX design. It's to ultimately be self-employed and to be a part of this creator economy that we are now in. And so with that being said, I'm trying to do this in a somewhat safer manner of still having a job and saving enough so that I can put away some in savings every single month so that I can quit my job once I have 12 months of living expenses saved up. And so right now, I've been able to save six months living expenses, which is pretty great. I'm really happy that I've been able to do that. Uh, and so I'll be working on saving up for the next six months of living expenses. But for some people, they may like the burn the ships method of just fuck it all. I'm just going to go all in on my goals. And I think the younger that you are, the easier that is to do. But I think definitely once you're in your 30s, that becomes a lot less viable because I would not want to live with my parents again. I love my parents, by the way. If they're watching this, I love you all very dearly. But I don't want to live with them in my 30s. That's embarrassing. <laughs> so uh, at least to me it is. And so I don't want to ever go through that embarrassment of failing so bad that I have to move back in with them. But I think if you're in your 20s, though, 
then it makes sense. It can make sense to do that because who cares if you have to live with your parents in your 20s? That's the time to sort of fuck things up anyway. So anyway, that's sort of the third pair of opposing forces is, is thinking about how much risk do you want to take with your goal attainment? Do you want to have more safety in the sense that you should probably maybe want to hold your daytime job so that you can put away some for savings and so you don't have to you know pressure yourself to achieve these goals within a short amount of time which may not happen no matter how much you work sometimes the universe just has its own timeline in store no matter how hard you work um or do you want to do the burn the ships method of just let's let's fucking go and burn burn the ships um, so those are definitely worth thinking about when it comes to uh, just goal attainment in your 30s, figuring out where you are along that spectrum. Now, there's this bonus element that sort of ties together all three pairs of these opposing forces, and that's the notion of binary versus non-binary thinking. And if you noticed, in all of the pairs of opposing forces, I labeled them as spectrums because you can sort of fall along a spectrum of each of the two pairs of forces. It's not like you're all hustle or you're all balance. And that's something that actually took me a while to realize because I treated all of my decision making as binary initially. And so, like I said before, when I was going in the UX design, I decided to go all in on that and then say fuck it to music production. I just completely shut that out of my life. But that's because I was exercising binary thinking. And so after a while, I started to become, I started to question myself and ask myself, well, what would, what would it look like if I practiced non-binary thinking? And so really all that is is just saying, well, what if I did, in, did include music production in some capacity? Maybe it's just doing it for a couple hours a week. Maybe it's just a couple hours a month just to make sure that I don't lose my edge with it. And so that has been really instrumental for me because, again, it's allowed me to find more balance in my life and knowing that, hey, I don't have to always go all in on something. Uh, I mentioned this in another video, but you know, treating life like light switches is not a good way to go. And what I mean by that is, you know, if I flip the light switch on for going all in on, on UX design, then that means I have to shut the light switch off for every other aspect, for friends, for dating, for music production. But what if they were dimmer switches and set instead? And maybe there is one weekend where I do want to focus a little bit more on UX design Well, I can turn up that dimmer switch and I can kind of lower the dimmer switches for the other aspects of my life, but I'm not shutting them off. I'm just lowering them. And then maybe the following week I realize that, hey, I feel like I need like more social activity so I can turn up that dimmer switch and then lower the dimmer switches for the other things. And I think that that has been a far more fulfilling way to live life as opposed to this binary thinking of I'm either going to go all in on this, which means I'm going to shut this out. At the end of the day, I'm ultimately trying to become comfortable with the notion that it's okay to not have life figured out. I don't have to have this clear trajectory on exactly what my life is gonna look like because I think that sort of ruins the spontaneity of life. And I think spontaneity can also often be the root of joy in someone's life. You know, a lot of times the most joyful moments are when you take those side quests in life to try out a new hobby, try out a new activity, meet that new person versus if you stay the course of this one solitary path, you may miss out on a lot. And so I think there's a lot of pressure that people can put on themselves to figure out what the right path is in life. And that's something that for me, I've put a tremendous amount of pressure on myself to do is to figure out what is the right path for me? If I have 10 roads in front of me, which one am I going to take to realize my goals and have the best life possible. And I'm starting to think that maybe it's not a matter of picking the right path, but it's just a matter of picking a path. 
Because I think as long as you're trying to grow as a person and you're trying to just move forward in life in whatever domain that is, whether that's professionally, relationally, or spiritually, I think as long as you're moving forward in any one of those domains, then I think that that's going to be a fulfilling way to go as opposed to just trying to figure out what the right path is. And there's something interesting that um, Alex Hormozzi brought up in one of his videos. And he, he brings up this scenario of imagine that you're 80 years old and you're on your deathbed and you're looking back at your life and you're reflecting on all of the, of the decisions that you made in life. Think about what are the decisions that would lead to the least amount of regrets and work back from there, and then that's what you should do in life. And so that's sort of what I try to think about from time to time is when I'm 80 years old and I look back on my life, do I wanna be known as someone that chased solitarily towards this one goal and that's it? Or do I want to be known as someone who tried all these different things and had a, a, a a wide range of, you know, enriching, fulfilling experiences. And I think that, uh, at least in my case, I think that the latter is going to be more, would lead me with less regret than just folk, tunnel vision focusing on one thing. And so that's definitely, if you haven't done that exercise, I strongly encourage that you try that. With that being said, no matter what goal that you are trying to chase, it does take a lot of focus and discipline to be able to reach whatever meaningful goal that you have for yourself. And so in this video, I cover the productivity strategies that I use that have really helped me out to be able to do that deep focused work that I need to be able to do when I do set aside time to um, work on my goals. And so if you're interested, definitely check that out here and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you found this video to be useful to you. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.